Hello everybody, it is Eric here again. I know it's been quite a long time since I've posted a tutorial video. I've just been swamped with school, honestly, and I haven't had much time between school, work, and family managing the Discord server and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I just had a sneak peek at how, my, how the YouTube channel is going, and it's, <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how to process all the numbers, um, but the channel has grown past 2.5 thousand subscribers, and the first video of this series has gone over 100,000 subscribers. Um, that is amazing. Thank you guys. I am still <laughs> processing all of that, and the Discord server uh, has grossed over, I think we're at, what, 100, over 1,700 members or so, which is just crazy. Um, with that out of the way, though, um, let's get on with the tutorial. So, I was going to do um, how to decompile a Forge mod, kind of how I go about decompiling a Forge mod, and the kind of steps for that. And so, I have picked um, a very simple... Uh, or mod for this tutorial. It's called Project L. Um, basically just fixes a bug in the game. I don't know much about it, but it is very simple code-wise. Um, but this tutorial can be extrapolated out to much more complicated mods. Uh, I've had a look at uh, the README for the person who makes the, who made this mod and about the section of that I can use his code. Um, he doesn't have source code available, but you can decompile it. Um, and, you know, he'd like credit, so if I were to publish my client, which I'm not really going to do, if I were to publish the, the my client out to everyone, I probably should put him in the credits, you know? As you should. So, if you're going to decompile a mod, either look for frequently asked questions, or just ask mod developers and just say, hey, I want to use your mod, do I have permission, etc. So, I'm also going to be using a few utilities to help me with this. Uh, first one is Java Decompiler. Uh, I'll put this in the description. Uh, it's very simple. I uh, just kind of want to showcase how I would go about doing this. And then a little program I wrote to decompile forge mods and then remap them and try it tries to do as much of the work for me as possible. So first I'm going to open this mod up in the Java decompiler. I'm just going to drag it on in here. Oh, did my computer just freeze? Oh no. Uh <laughs> my computer just froze. I can still move my mouse, I can't, I, I can't click anything. Can I get to task manager? I can't get to task manager. Okay, um... Let's try that again! That worked this time, not sure what just happened there. So if I look at this, I'll make this a little bigger. Uh, you can see that well, the mod decompiled. If you kind of know how what Forge mods work, you have the at mod handler. And this is not going to be a tutorial for Forge mods. Here are your imports, uh, initializing events, sort of kind of like how events work uh, in this series. But instead of at subscribe event, it's like event handler or whatever the name I came up with. Uh, but you'll see that all of these fields are not mapped. So... We're like, okay, we have a player. We know that's a player, but that might be named something different in uh, Forge versus MCP. Um, I'm going to assume this is get Minecraft. Uh, and this is probably getting the player. Now, figuring out what these is going to be a bit harder. We'll figure it out. And this looks to be like some sort of command that toggles the mod. It looks a bit... I'm going to guess this is going to... This sort of looks like it's going to send something to the console, or not the console, the chat, because it takes a chat component text. Um, so, not sure what a bunch of these other things do, but I'm not even going to go over to the command today. 
So let's close out of this. And I'm going to just make a new folder. Uh, we'll just call it temp. Just need a folder to put things in. So we're going to put project L and my little program in here. Double click this to open it. And I'll make sure to leave a link in the description where to download this. You can view the source. It's on GitHub. You want to select the mod version or the version of Minecraft you're most really the version of Minecraft you're using, but it, if you want to, your mod should also be the same version that your client is roughly. Uh, the mod is for 1.8, but I'm going to use 1.8.8. .8. I'm going to select the mod. Uh, that's not the right file. I'm going to select Project L. Click open. Click go. And it's done already. Uh, if it fails for some reason, you can toggle the console, view what it's doing. Um, but it's I'm not really going to go over much how to use this program. So if we look in the code, though, we should see that it decompiled the Forge mod, and we have a .java file. So if I open this, we should see that it's tried to figure out the imports, um, and we can see here are the rotations for them. Now, another way of getting these is to either look at the raw mapping files yourself, uh, or there is a program written by someone on the Forge team, I forget who wrote this, um, that allows you to type in an, um, one of the obfuscated names and it outputs um, kind of the deobfuscated names, sort of. Or the, I guess it's not really deobfuscated, it's more of the remapped names, my bad. Um, but there are going to be some that are slightly different, um, because Forge has their own mappings that extend from MCP mapping. So what we're going to do is go into our IDE and let's make a new mod. And for this example, let's name it Project L because I'm not creative. Mod Project L. And let's just extends. I cannot spell today. He extends mod. Mod draggable. I'm just going to make some draggable text, really. Um, let's, for the width of our mod, let's return the font uh, dot get string width of like project L disabled or something. You know, it doesn't really need to be anything fancy. Uh, I'm just going to do return font font height and this is mainly so I can just check if the mod if the mod is enabled or disabled um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tell the difference um, between if it's enabled or disabled I'm not I don't PvP I you know this mod apparently fixes head rotation but I don't think I'm gonna be able to tell the difference um, now when we render something let's just render a string so we're going to say font dot draw string and we'll just say project L, and uh, if it's enabled or disabled. So I'm going to do this in two steps. Uh, string. And this is not the most optimal way to do it whatsoever, but I think it should explain hopefully in more detail what I'm doing. So we're going to say if uh, is enabled. Going to say enabled string. Uh, oh, you know, actually, what I would want to do, I want to also render a dummy too. Mm, no. I really should have written a script for this video, but I just haven't had time. I uh, will say enabled string equals enabled else enabled string equals disabled. Uh, we can also add some colors, so enum chat formatting dot, let's make it red, why not? And then if it's enabled, let's make it green, enum chat formatting dot green. And then we're going to do 
do project L plus enable string. You can make this into a one liner if you want to. Uh, we'll just set the color. We'll do negative one. I believe that should be uh, white. I think the negative one. It, uh, and then for the x and y, it's position dot get absolute x. Position dot get absolute y. Now, if we look back at the code here, we can see that they have a mouse event. Now, I don't believe we have made a mouse event yet. No, we have not. So, how are we going to go about finding the mouse event in Forge? There are multiple ways of doing it. You could go to the Forge GitHub, which I'll leave in the description, uh, and you can browse through all the files in there and find where, and all the patches, and find where the Forge event is called from. Or what I like to do is load up just a blank forge project in another eclipse window and what i usually do is i go to uh not that one the reference libraries and look at where forge source is so forge source net microforge um i'm gonna just take a wild guess it's gonna be under the event package because it's an event now, I don't see it here, uh, and I'm like, okay, well, where else would I find it? You know, is it under entity? I don't think so. Oh, uh, it's probably going to be under client. Uh, there we go. There's an event package under client, because the mouse event if it was client side. You can't have a mouse on a the server. There we go. Mouse event. And if we look at that, it's pretty much all the code we need. So let's copy this. Now I want to take note that they, this is a cancelable event, and so we should keep that in mind when we're making our event class. So let's make a new event and say new class, let's call this mouse event. I'm just going to paste in, uh, oops, uh, paste in the class, and instead of event, we're going to do event cancelable because this event we saw you was using the app cancelable, but for ours, we don't have that annotation. We extend event cancelable. And when we, and when we import the mouse, we're gonna get two mouses here. Now let's find out which one we use. Let's look back at the forge source, and it's using, well, forge, yeah, keep it's using lightweight Java game library mouse. So when we import the mouse, Let's import the lightweight Java game library mouse. Awesome. Don't have any errors. Then what we want to do is figure out where do we call this from? I don't know. So we're going to go back to the forge source and going to click on mouse event, right click and say uh, open call hierarchy. Now this will show me where uh, every new instance of this class is created. We see there's one in post mouse event. And if we kind of look at this class, it looks like all of the forge events are dispatched from here. So let's figure out where post mouse event is called from. Looks like it's called in run tick in net Minecraft client Minecraft. So this says, okay, while the mouse is next, if this event is cancelled, we're going to just continue. Uh, or, if it's not cancelled, we go down. It's the loop of everything. So, let's implement that. Let's go down to net minecraft client minecraft.java and let's look for mouse. Iterating through these, mouse helper, more stuff with the mouse. Uh, let's keep scrolling down. All right, maybe in here. Ah, here we go. This while mouse next, 
just like in the Forge Source. So let's do a new mouse event. The event equals new mouse event. We're going to say event dot call if event dot is cancelled we're just going to continue all right we should have a working mouse event so let's implement this in here so let's do at event target public void on mouse mouse event event Now we can go back to our decompiled code and let's copy this, paste it in here, and we're going to get some errors. So let's figure out what our errors are. We want to import Minecraft, import player, and now this dot enabled we want to change to is enabled to figure out if our mod's enabled. And there's our mod pretty much done. We still need to uh, add this mod to our module manager. So let's go to the instance, private static mod project L. Let's just call this project L. Good enough name. And we're going to say mod pro, oh, it's project L equals new mod project L API dot register project L. There we go. We should have our project L mod implemented. It's from the game. Let's just go to our world. What happened here? Oh, yeah. Alrighty, and we should see our project L is enabled. Alrighty, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully, I can make more videos at some point. You know, it's just it's how it is. I can't really change anything, <laughs> uh, but I will. I will try to get more videos out as soon as I can. Stay safe. Take care.